let's go ahead and take, start looking at how to graph uh, quadratic equations. So we're going to have to go ahead and look at something like <clears throat> y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. We're going to go ahead and start putting these onto a graph. So let me just give you a quick little... Um, <coughs> quick little intro to some of the terminology we're going to use here and uh, we can go through this. So first, a quadratic equation all right, is a nonlinear equation in the form of uh, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay? Now these are going to be in the shape of what's called a parabola. All right? And the most basic quadratic equation, the most basic quad, uh, parabola you're going to see is this y equals x squared. Right? This is sort of, we had this idea before about parent functions. Well, this is your parent parabola. Okay? All other parabolas are going to be sort of a, a, um, a version of this one here. Okay? So this is your, here's your parabola. Okay? It's kind of, it's like a, whoops. Um, Sorry, it's uh, it's gonna look basically like uh, like your exponential growth models, okay? Except it does the same thing on both sides, okay? So rather than coming down here and then getting closer and closer to zero, it's gonna come down here and then it's gonna bounce back up, okay? Well, this point where it bounces back up, or the lowest point in this case, is gonna be called your vertex, okay? This is a very important term. I want you to make sure you know this vertex, okay? It's with the bottom of the parabola, okay? Or it's, it's, it's basically where it shifts. If, if it's coming down, it shifts to going back up, okay? Now, and you'll see later, like, these things might be flipped up on, flipped upside down, so your vertex might be your highest point, okay? Well, the axis of symmetry is going to be the line that runs through the vertex, okay? Your vertical line that runs through the vertex. It's kind of the thing that, you know, it's going to split it in half, okay? So two, uh, two things that I would definitely want you to know about the graphs, okay? And remember that these are called parabolas, okay? These are called parabolas, and these are called quadratic equations, okay? And the reason quadratic, it comes quad means square, and that's where this idea, because the x is squared, that's why they're called quadratic equations. Okay, well, let's take a look. Where might you see parabolas? Well, parabolas sort of exist all over the place, and some of these are not exact parabolas, but, you know, they're, they're close. But here you see the arch, this arch St. Louis. Okay. You'll see them in bridges. You can see sort of the, uh, the supports there, the beams or the uh, wire supports coming down. You might see it in, like, a skate ramp, okay? It's part of kind of a parabola-shaped light coming from a flashlight. Uh, a heat, like these are called uh, solar ovens, okay, and we'll talk a little bit more about these, but these, base, these are based on uh, principles of parabolas. Uh, satellite dishes, for sure, based on the ideas, and I'll show you a little bit more about this as well. Okay, I've got a fountain. Basketball, okay, this was a basketball time lapse photo of a basketball bouncing. Kind of a vertical motion model problems. So why do we use these? All right. What's the point? Well, let's take a look. And I want to sort of go back and give you this thing, this idea of the solar oven and the satellite dish. Okay. So it's called the focus of a parabola. And really what happens is as it, as you have something, right, a beam, maybe some light or something coming across here, what's going to happen is it's going to come and it's going to bounce off part of the parabola, okay? And it's going to bounce at an angle. And because of the way this thing goes, wherever these bounce off, they're going to end up, end up intersecting at the same point, okay? Well, this might be very beneficial. Well, let's look down here, okay? So I'm going to decrease A. See, I'm going to make this A. So it's going to decrease. I'm going to make it wider. So let me make it a little bit more in the shape of, so let's say, a satellite dish or maybe like that solar oven. Now, if I blast a beam in there, you'll see as it comes across, they all bounce out and they meet at this focal point, right? And this would be maybe where that stew was sitting, right? If I come back and I look at... Um, you know, the solar oven, this right here, this pot is going to be in the middle. All of the light's going to come in here, right? And all of the light will come here, which will generate heat and make this thing uh, hot. And so you can, you can cook just based on using the sun, okay? So 
um, that's one way of doing it. And now I could I could decrease a quite a bit here, right? I could make it real small, make it sort of a very shallow dish here, and throw some beams at it. And you'll see as they bounce off, they come much further away, right? And that might look something like a satellite dish, right? This is where it comes. All the information comes from um, comes out. It r comes into the satellite dish. It bounces up. Okay, and more of focus in place into this area, and then it's transmitted to somewhere else to process that data. Okay, so just a couple of ideas and as to why what they're useful, what they're what the purpose is. Okay, and you know if you increase a, you'll see it's going to get narrower and narrower and narrower, and then if you throw the beam in there, okay, it might get closer to the uh, the vertex. All right, well let's go back and let's start let's start taking a look at. <coughs> some of um, the graphs here, okay? So let's just start off right away. What I'm going to do, um, we'll just do your uh, parent parabola, and we'll do this in, I'm trying to see what color, we'll do this in blue. Okay. So the parent parabola is going to be in blue, and really you just make an input-output table. Let's just start off with an input-output table, okay? X and Y. Now if I think about this, I would should think about a little bit about domain and range, okay? Domain. What numbers can I plug in here, okay? Well, let's see. You always want to say, can I put positive numbers in? Yes. Can I put negative numbers in? Yes, I could. Can I put in zero? All of these are true. So let's go ahead and we'll try putting in, we'll start with zero. We'll plug in zero. We'll put in one and we'll put in two. And maybe even put in three and we'll see what happens here, okay? And then we'll see, we'll put in negative one, and then we'll put in negative two, and we'll just kind of see what happens here. But I want to start at zero, okay? So if I plug in zero here, zero squared is zero. So that's going to be the beginning point here, okay? And then if I plug in one, well, one squared is one. So as I move over one, I go up one. Okay, and then if I put plug in two, well, two squared is going to be four. Two, one, two, three, four. And then as I go 3, I'm going to say 3 squared. Well, that's 9. So 1, 2, 3, 3 here. That's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Right? And then I know my next one, right? If I put in, let's say, 4, I would get 16. Right? 4 squared is 16. So this is 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay? So you can see this is what it looks like. We go kind of curve up like this. Up. Whoops. I got a little. Okay, this curved line, exponential growth, and it goes on and on and on and on. Okay. Now I can look at negative one. Well, let's see. If I plug in negative one, negative one times negative one is going to give me positive one. Okay. And then negative two squared will be negative times a negative is positive, so this will be four. And hopefully you're starting to see a pattern here. Is basically you're going to get a mirror image. Okay. And I'm not going to worry about that one up there. And so as I graph this, right, it slopes up, and it's going to go like that. Okay? And so there's my parabola. And uh, you can see the vertex here is at 0, 0. My axis of symmetry is going to be the y-axis here. It's splitting the middle. Okay? The line is actually x equals 0 here. That's my line of symmetry. Okay? And really, it's just a mirror image, right? Once you find out the, the axis of symmetry, you know that if I went over 2 and up 4, I'm going to go over 2 this way and up 4. Okay? Well, getting back to that idea of domain and range, take a look at that and tell me if you could think about what would be the range. Remember, the range is the values that can come out of the, uh, of the equation. Well, hopefully you looked at that and you said, well, I don't see any negative numbers that can come out of there. So your range in this case would be all numbers greater than 0, right? y is greater than or equal to 0. So that would be your range. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple other ones here, OK? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to erase this my uh, graph here, or my input output table, and I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to leave the blue one up here, and what I'm going to do is let's take a look at y is equal to x squared plus 3, and let's see what happens there, and we'll do this one in green, okay? So let's see, we'll do, we'll do x and y again, okay, we'll do this, like I said, we'll do this in green, we'll do x and y, and we'll make an input output table, and we'll just do the basic negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and that should give us enough information. So let's do this. So if I plug in 0, 0 squared, 0, plus 3, 3. Okay. Um, 
<clears throat> if I plug in 1, 1 squared is 1, plus 3 is 4, 2 squared is 4, and 4 plus 3 is 7. And then if I plug in negative 1 squared, that's going to give me 1 plus 3 is 4. And so I should see that this is going to be 7, right? So if I look at this, let's go ahead and graph it. I'm going to go up 0, 3. So there's my vertex again. And I'm going to go over 1 and up 1, 2, th oops, sorry. I'm going to go, uh, yeah, over 1 and then up to 4 here. And then over 2 and up to 7. Okay. Uh, did I go too far? Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Nope. Okay, and then I'm going to go the other way here. All right, and it's a mirror image, so I'm going to be here. And, and if I look at this, I'm going to say, okay, well, if, let's say I put in 3, right? 3 would be 9, 9 squared plus 3, so that would be 12. So if I'm noticing here, I'm looking, I'm like, wait, this one is 3 above here, and this is 3 above here, and this one is 3 above here, so maybe this one will just be 3 above here. Let's count. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that looks pretty good to me, okay? And then I'm going to put the same one over on this side. And if I graph it, okay, it basically looks this, like the same parabola, just shifted up three places, which should make sense because... That just says, there's my parent parabola, y equals x squared, plus 3. Push the whole thing up. Okay. Well, let's try another one here. Let's see what happens if I go ahead and I, let's say we graph y is equals x squared minus 3. Okay. Well, let's do input-output table. So we'll do x and y, and we'll do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Okay, and if I plug in 0, I'm going to get negative 3. And if I plug in 1, I get 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And if I do 2 to squared, I get 4. 4 minus 3 is going to be uh, 1. Okay? And let's go ahead and put negative 1. Negative 1 squared is going to be 1 minus 3 is going to be negative 2. And then negative 2 squared will be 4. And 4 minus 3 is 1. So we can go ahead and graph this one. So I'm going to start at 0, comma, negative 3. And then I'm going to go over 1 and negative 2. And then I'm going to go over 2, and I'm going to be at 1. Okay, and then let's just put in 3 and see what happens. 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 3, I'll get 6. So then I can go over 3 and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I can really just mirror image this over, right? Because I know that this is my axis of symmetry right here. So I can just go here, here, okay? And we'll take a look at this. Parabola, and it goes up, and you can see it's just like the parent parabola, but it's shifted down three. Okay. All right, well, hopefully that's <coughs> making a lot more sense. And let's try one more here. Let's do one more and see what happens. And let's do this one in orange. And So let's say I have 2x squared. Well, what's going to happen there? Well, again, you're going to have, we'll do a input output table here, okay? X and Y, and we'll do... Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Okay, and if I plug in negative 2, I'm going to get negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. And 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2, and this will be 0. And we would already did these, and I'll get 2 and 8. What we'll notice is, right, let's go back, and I should probably write the parent parabola again. We'll just put it in here. And when we did negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, and we can compare, right? So this was 0, and 1, and 4, and 1, and 4, okay? Now, if I look at the orange one here, right, if I look at 2x squared, you'll notice all these values are just doubled, which seems to make sense, right? 2, I'm multiplying everything by 2. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to have the same vertex as I did, but instead of going over 1 and up 1, I'm going to go over 1 and up 2 and then over 2, and then up 8. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, and then I can just go ahead and fill these ones in on the other side. All right, and if I went over 3, I'd go up 9, which means I'd have to go up 18, which, let's see, it's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, all the way at the top. Oops, not, yeah, right there. Okay, and then I'd have it on the other side, and you'll see this thing just goes up, and get skinnier a lot quicker. Okay? So there's the orange one. Let's try another one. Let's do one more here, and hopefully you'll have a good idea of what's going on, and you can do some practice yourself. Okay? Well, let's just actually look at... Oh, uh, you'll do one half x here, okay? 
And we'll do an input output table. Okay, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And you'll see, it'll be these same values, but everything will be one half of that. So I'll go ahead and I'll say, okay, 0 is going to be 0. And I plug in 1, and 1 squared is 1, and so this would be 1 half. And then 2 squared is 4, and then 4 times 1 half is 2. So then this would be 1 half, and this will be 2. And let's go ahead and put those in. And again, I'll start in this middle part here, and then I'll go over 1 and up 1 half. And then over 2 and up 2. Okay, and I can go ahead and put these on the other side. And let's see what happens if I plug in 3, right? I'd put in 3, I'd get 9, and then I'd get 1 half of 9. It's going to be 9 halves, so that's about, that's 4 and a half. So let's go here and we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half. Okay, I'm going to go on the other side, 4 and a half. Plug in 4, I'd get 4 squared. 4 squared is 16. Half of that is 8. So we can go here and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And you'll notice this thing is going to be flatter, okay? It's going to be, it's not going to go up as fast. It's definitely going to be sort of this <coughs> fatter version of your parabola, okay? Now I know there's a lot of different colors on there and there's a lot of different parabolas and this is quite a bit of information, but I want you to go ahead and I want you to try practicing a couple of these different ideas, okay? Um, I'm not going to go over this next one. I think you have uh, a, enough information, okay? Well, you can go ahead and if we were to graph y equals negative x squared, okay, based on the information that we did here, okay, especially with the parent parabola, I want you to think what might happen when you do y equals negative x squared, okay? okay? What might happen here? And hopefully you look at this and you go, oh, that looks like I think this whole thing will get flipped, right? So you'd be here, but instead of going over one, up one, I'm going to over one, down one. And instead of going over two, up four, I'm going to go over two, down four. And instead of going over three, up nine, I'm going to go down nine. Right? And then I'm going to mirror image this across because it's symmetrical, axis of symmetry. Okay, and you'll see that this goes down. You're pointing down on this one. Okay? So that's the general idea. Well, I want you to go ahead and do some practice on your own. Um, not too many problems. Just a uh, couple to do here. Um, focus on uh, really 7 through 13 odd. Make sure you check your answers in the back. Please, please, please. And uh, come to class. Have some questions ready on Monday. Um, we'll do a couple of uh, word problems on Monday. So help you uh, make sure you guys understand this uh, pretty well. Okay, good luck.